So two, a few things you mustn't do before you talk. One is drink alcohol, and two is eat. And I've done both, so forgive me if things go wrong. But I will try my best, and I will try and be 15 minutes. Um, so, I've got a very grandiose title of Message Before Media. And what I want to do is take a step back. It's late at night, we're all ready to sort of, we've had our pizza, we've had our drink, and we're ready to sort of wind down now. But I want to get your brains thinking a little bit about your business or organisation or your personal brand and or how you engage with clients. Because what I love about what Abby shared and what I love about what, what these events are all about is we can get down into details about, you know, great SEO, great video, great digital, good technology. I love all of that. I run a digital creative agency, so I've got a techie team, a digital team, a creative team. But I want to take a step back and I want to look at what really creates cut through. What creates that loyalty that builds businesses and builds brands over a period of time? It's one thing to execute the Christmas campaign. It's another thing to build brands for the other 11 and a half months of the year. Does that make sense? And so brand is something that needs to be considered before marketing and before technology. Now, I'm not a creative director. I have got a creative director, so I'm not going to give you the flowery brand stuff that he... I shouldn't say the flowery stuff. The amazing stuff that my creative director would bring. But, um, yeah, I just want to give you a couple of key principles, make it really practical, and be done in 13 and a half minutes. So, just as we start, or before we get into the meet, quick show of hands, who here is, sort of runs their own organisation, or whatever guys that might be? Okay, pretty much most most of the guys in the room. Who here is involved in some form of marketing, whether that's as a job or within your organisation? Okay, good, I'm in the right room. Good, thank, brilliant. And I think I want to take a step back from everything we do, and one of the things I do with, with companies and within an organisation is help them to think like this and help them to think about business growth in a new way. So, first off, I want to start with a horror story. Now, if you run your own organisation, you may have been in one of these scenarios. Scenario one, the 30-second pitch at the business networking breakfast. Been there, no, 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 no letters or names implied, BNI, but I'm just saying, you may have been to one of these events, BNI, and you've got to stand up every week and say the same thing. And it's just like, really? And it, it, it's either a horror story for you or for me, because you're standing there thinking, I'm going to say the same flipping thing I said last week. Or it's a horror story because you've got 20 other people you've got to listen to that makes you want to poke your eyeballs out. So that's scenario one. Scenario two, the awkward dinner party. Sat next to Dave, the accountant. Now, I love accountants. Accountants are good people. But if you've got to spend two hours next to Dave, the accountant, and he's going to say, hello, my name's Dave, and I'm an accountant. End of conversation. You're kind of done, right? Hey, Dave, so what kind of books do you do? Cool, nice dessert. You know, it's that kind of conversation. Scenario three, the speed dating event. You ever been to any of those? Where you've got like two minutes and you've got one person on the side of the table, someone else on the other side of the table, and you've got two minutes to explain something, and it is honestly, in my opinion, in my experience, it's been a horror story. I've been involved in them, I've ran them, and maybe it's just me, but they're absolutely horror shows. And one of the major reasons why, I believe for most companies, those, those scenarios and many other scenarios we can, we can um, sort of conjure up in our mind, is because for many people, either in our own organisation or businesses that we engage with, aren't clear on their value proposition. And I want to explain what that means. And for some, for some of you, that's going to be basic stuff, real 101 stuff, and forgive me if it is, but I think in, in order for us to really create cut through in our content, in our marketing, in our engagement, we talk about all these amazing, amazing tools and techniques. We talk about all these new principles and video, and we talk about all the amazing things that Abby went through. But if you don't know your value proposition, it's extremely hard to create cut through. And brands that grow and businesses that grow consistently over a period of time, if you study this, and now I'm going to sound like Dave the Accountant, but if you study this over a consistent period of time, those brands that grow year on year, month on month, are those that are clear on their value proposition and they're clear on how to communicate it. And it creates cut through, not just in marketing, but in something called promise. And just as a kind of, just as an example, I want you to think about some of the brands that you buy into and why you buy into them. And one of the fundamental reasons is they deliver on their promise. So you will say, 
I always wear X. For me, I always go to the same hairdresser. You know, you always go to the same, you always go to the same things. If some of you are working out there, is this guy for real? Does he really go to a hairdresser? That's the waste of money. You know, you're all so polite, you're so English. If I, if I do this talk in Germany, like, ha, 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 you have no hair. You know, but you guys are so English and polite. So, I've got nine minutes left. You were going to heckle me, weren't you? I know, I was waiting for you to heckle me. But creating, value, creating a clear value proposition, whether you're launching a new brand, new product, new service, whether you're repositioning your business, whether you want to grow your company, whether you're executing a new campaign, it's absolutely vital. I'm going to give you three really simple tips later on. But I found this earlier, and it just made me laugh. It might not make you laugh. Next into the Shark Tank is Mary Ellen Simonson, who believes her product has the potential to make millions. Hello, my name is Mary Ellen Simonson. I have created a product that will keep your sticky notes in place and organized while working at your computer. I am here to ask for $100,000 in investments for 20% equity in my company. I created this product because I was tired of losing sticky notes and having to reposition them all day long. This example here is an example of what we're all used to seeing. There's been no change in it. There's been no solution to it until today. You simply attach it to your laptop or your desktop and you put all your notes here you can also attach it to this side Marilyn you created a sticky pad for sticky pads I created an arm for sticky pads that's worth half a million dollars yes please well, tell me why all, all you simply do is is swing the sleeve in when you're ready to go and as you can see none of them fall off oh I see why it's worth half a million dollars thank you it folds into the computer. <laughs> of course, that makes sense to me now. You've sold how many? I have sold none. Excellent, excellent. I think we should keep this a secret. It's so valuable that nobody should know about this. Come on, who's going to buy this from you? This year alone, 56 million laptops will be sold here in the United and States. every one of them doesn't need your sticky arm. This year alone, over 400 million laptops will be sold worldwide. How much is it worth? What would I pay for that? Uh, $9.50. For Stop your, the for madness. Are you out of your mind? Yes. Are you crazy? Yes. Who would give you 10 bucks for that? A, it's lot, a, piece of of a lot of people. How do you know that? How do you know that? I've, I've, I've done surveys. There's so many bad things about this. Let me count the ways. I'm out. Mary, convince me why this isn't the worst idea I've ever seen. This year alone, there'll be 56 million laptops. Okay, you gotta stop that right away. You know what? I can't tell you how many people come to me and say, if I can get 1% of 1% of the billion, you, you, zero from zero is still zero. So forget that. Let that go. Give me another one. Give me another reason why this is great. This is solving a problem that everybody has who uses sticky notes. I don't have that problem who uses sticky notes while working at the laptop. Have you shown this to anybody that said, I like this and will sell it for you? I, I have not because I've, I have not secured a patent yet. Don't waste your time with the money on the patent. I think no sales, a useless idea, I'm totally out. If you walked in here today with some kind of interest in this product, uh, I think you may be getting a little bit different reaction from us right now, so I'm out. I don't think your product is worth what you're asking, but I do think you have a product there. And I think for ten dollars a pop on a QVC type what station, what planet did yeah, you come from? No, let me tell you, I think you could sell it. But I love this lady. You're solid on your feet, all right. I just don't think you're going to make a business of this. You know, so for me, I'm out, but for, not because of you. I think you need a new product. Brother, you got you to stop so, that. You know what? That's why she's here. She's here with a horrible idea because somebody in her family or her friends said that I'm to you. You're really friend. nice and encourage you. Have you spent any of your own money? I've doing spent about $1,000. No. That's the good news. You should stop, find something else, move on. I'm out. Thank you for your time. Good Thank luck, you. Mary Ellen. This lady had created a sticky pad for sticky pads. Is there really a problem, is my first question. We know we use sticky notes, we, we've used sticky notes for many years, and we stick them in many places. Is there a problem with the way we're using sticky notes? Are we solving some, one of life's B2B or B2C problems? I'm not sure. Secondly, are we solving that problem by creating a sticky pad for the sticky pad? I'm not sure again. 
Thirdly, is that worth half a million dollars at, at launch point? I'm not sure again. And this is a bit of an extreme example. But going back to the horror story at the beginning, one of the reasons that for some of us and the organizations I work with, my own business, and you know, I've been around the block now a few years, remember life before Google, remember life before YouTube, there was a life, there was, there was a world before then. And the, 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 the simple and understanding of brand has not changed. We have to have a problem that we're answering and we have to know who we're answering that problem for. And yet I work in the digital space now and if I talk to 20 digital companies, they will tell me the same thing 18 times. If I work with 15 manufacturing companies that manufacture things, I say, what do you do? I make products. Brilliant. So do your 14 other competitors. Where is the value in what you do? And finding that out is absolutely key to be able to create content, campaigns, activities that not only tell stories, but that create genuine engagement and ultimately genuine results, which is business growth, which should be market share, or whatever the results are that you want to create through your activity. So just in terms of a couple of stats, because you've got to throw some internet stats in there, brands spend 25 to 43% of their marketing budget on content, yet only 23% of CMOs feel they're producing the right information for the right audience, value proposition, and delivering it at the right time and correct format, execution. The two have to work together. If we had more time, we could unpack that a little bit more. Basically, that means that 77% of CMOs are wasting time and budget, good use of marketing budget. Then you wonder why there's so much crap on the internet. Excuse my French, I shouldn't swear because I'm being recorded. I've been recorded for the last half an hour, which is not good. <laughs> Next, audience relevance, what Abby was sharing earlier on, is number one when it comes to content effectiveness at 58%, but compelling storytelling takes a strong second at 57%. So audience and value proposition, working together creates a cut through. Getting to the end of the stats now, because I've only got four minutes left. 46% of marketers say photography is crit critical to the current marketing and storytelling strategies. Believe it or not, Instagram is not just for traveling or food or for your biceps. There is a point to it. There is a point to how we can tell our stories and create cut through utilizing social and digital channels if we're clear on our value proposition. Let me give you an example. If I came to Instagram channel, would I be engaged with not only what you do, but why you do it and why I should buy from you if I was your target audience? Or are we trying to be generalist brands, jack of all trades, master of none, and therefore without a target audience, we don't sell to anyone? It's a really interesting challenge when creating campaigns. And the amazing thing about digital, if we have more time, is we can A-B test, we can deep dive into different, you know, we can do so much technical work that enables us to see what works better, what doesn't work better for A audience, B audience, C audience. But the key thing that many marketers miss is an understanding of their own or their client's value proposition. So what does that mean? Last stat, very important. 48% of marketers in the internet was invented for pictures of cats. I obviously made that up, don't write that down. So next one, three key principles, because I've got four minutes left in develop, this is Becky, she put me under time pressure. <laughs> I was meant to have 20 minutes, now I've got 15. So number one, into how do you create a really simple cut through value proposition? Now I'm simplifying something that genuinely takes a lot of thought, it takes market research, it takes consumer research. Let me give you a practical example. When was the last time you asked your customers why they buy from you? When was the last time you asked them why they don't buy from your competitors? Is it just because you're cheap? Is it because we're cheap? Is it because you're quick and they think they can just get anything out of you for free? Why is it they buy from you? Know how and why your product or service solves a customer's problems. Digital marketing doesn't solve anyone's problems. Digital marketing is just a form of marketing. The, what is the problem that it's solving? What is the intrinsic value that you or I add to our customer? And it's quite often not what we do. Because most of what we do in many circumstances, a lot of what I do is a commodity. Some of what I do is build websites. 
The adage I always use for that is my brother genuinely built a website at 12 years old. I was at university, he phoned me up and said, hey Dan, uh, check out this, and he went to his web link, and I went onto his web link, comment, but it was now something really weird probably, as it would be for a 12 year old, and there was pictures of these wrestlers, just these random pictures, WWF wrestlers as it was called back then, on a website, I was like, what is this bro? And he said, I built this website. And it's always stuck with me, and he's a policeman now randomly, but it's always stuck with me that um, a 12 year old can build a website. So sometimes, because I'm, I'm a fairly black and white and brutal person, my web guys can't, I built a website, what are you doing? My 12 year old brother did that. Where's the value in it? Where's the strategy? Where's the thinking? What's the cut through? What are we actually trying to achieve for the customer here? So quick little hint, for most of us what we do is not unique, but how we do it and what problems we solve are relevant to our dot, dot, dot. I'm gonna pretend I left that in there on purpose for you to fill in. So use your imagination right now. Number two, know your brand promise and not just your marketing message. So what does that mean in real terms? I'm getting all flowery now. Okay, so why should I work with you? What are you promising to deliver? No, no, but I do, I do your this and I do your that. So, so does everyone else. What are you promising to deliver? Know your brand promise. Great brands deliver consistently on clear promises. That's why if you watch a car, watch a car advert, for example, what do you see? You see the wheels, you see the mountains, you don't see the car. You're not buying the car, you're buying the experience. You're buying the feeling, you're buying the luxury. A perfume advert, what are you buying? The sensuality of it. You're not buying the product. Half the time it stinks, well, whatever. But you're buying the, a promise. You're promising to deliver something. And it's the same in a B2B environment. B2B marketing is very competitive nowadays. What creates cut through? Can I, within 30 seconds, the old elevator pitch, find out what the promise is of your brand and how it's been delivered? And that's where there's a power in case studies, that's where there's a power in video content. I look at what Mark's been referenced tonight already, but look at what Mark Gaysford does at Red Sprout, it's phenomenal. They, they, they communicate a promise, and they communicate it through very clear marketing, but you're getting the promise, you're getting it all the time. We do this, we, we, this is how we work, this is who we are, these are our values, this is our communication channels. We, consistency, getting it all the time. I've really got to finish now. Your promise is not a marketing campaign, it's the key benefit and value that you deliver. See, it's easy to come up with a marketing message. Oh, you did a Christmas campaign. Happy Christmas. Christmas is good. You know, you can come, and it's just, it's naff. That's why most marketing is useless. Creates no cut through. That's the honest truth. You know, and we've seen, I mean, I'll show you some case studies later, but we've seen some phenomenal results just by take, getting a client out of their own world, out of their own ego, and getting them back into, take a step back, genuinely what do you deliver? Had a couple of really awkward situations when you start scratching, you do these two day strategy workshops and you come out of it and it's like, not much. <laughs> so you basically take the consultancy fees and you finish, I'm joking, you don't do that. I would never do that. But you know, you've really got to get down to some nitty, and this is kind of, hopefully it's making us think a little bit and making us challenge ourselves and it's something that we try and do with our own organisation and with our clients. Identify, and this sounds really, really sort of cliche, but I want to unpack this a little bit in the next 30 seconds. Identify and target your key customers. Clue, SMEs in Kent is not a target audience. It's a business demographic. SMEs in Kent is 95% of the market across a massive radius to tens of thousands of businesses. Now, if you've got a product and you've got the budget that can connect with that audience, then great, let's talk afterwards. But if you haven't, you seriously need to work and look at a niche. So SMEs, SMEs is anyone from one to, was it 250 staff, I think it is. So where do you have value in that? Is it in a one, one person company? Or is it in a 250, 500 person company? Or is it a 10 to 30 person company? Is it between particular audience? Is it to a particular demographic? Within a company, is it to CEOs, CMOs, CTOs, MDs, marketing managers, who, where, how, when? Tell me your target audience. Could you tell me that? You see, because when you start to think that way, you start thinking, do you know what? The next campaign I run, I want to execute it to this audience using these channels with this message because I'm clear on my value proposition, I know my audience, therefore the channels, the video, the SEO, the, the paid campaigns, whatever they may be, it's targeted. And I will almost guarantee 
without putting it in our contract that you will get better results in your previous campaign. In fact, we do put those in our contracts. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like really sales, is not it? What's a sales idiot? So, just to put a proof of the pudding, put our money where our mouth is, our, our core mission as an organization is to deliver lasting change. So, on a very serious note, we've take, had to take this really seriously over the last while, which is why I'm quite black and white about it, and over time, is that we won't go into a company and work with a company anymore where we cannot see lasting change, where we can't see over a period of time what the difference is that we make, because we don't know if we demonstrate value or not. It's as simple as that. So we, we, if we can't work with whether they be board level, where well it's always board level, or owner manager level, if we cannot deliver lasting change, so in other words, if they say, oh, I just want something quick and easy, even if they've got loads of budget, we won't take it on. It's, it's an absolute part of our mission is to do that. And then we will say, why? Because we, with the reason we exist, our key promise is to deliver lasting change in a fast or high growth business. So for us, that's our defining factor of our target audience. So that could be a startup. So we have a lot of startups in our books, a lot of tech startups, a lot of, um, we're doing an amazing campaign for a German tech startup at the moment, that's why I joke about Germans. Um, they have got a good, good sense of humor, actually. And, um, you know, right through to sort of we're working with, with some, yeah, you know, billion, billion pound organizations. It's not about that, it's about whether they're fast or high growth. Because the kind of plans and strategies we put into place align with them. It's not better, it's not worse, it's just what we do. It's taken me a long time, a lot of energy and a lot of mistakes to work out what we're not good at doing. You know, one of the keys to a value proposition is actually working out what you're not good at doing and what you don't want to deliver. Really helps to define what you are good at doing and what you do want to deliver. Um, and then we wrapped it up in a story, which I won't bore you with now. So, you know, for us, it's been a journey. I just wanted to show you that as an example of, you know, for us, it's really building around where do we really add value? How do we challenge ourselves? What is it all about? And so that's the kind of story that we tell. Um, so to conclude, don't be the inventor of the sticky pad pad. <laughs> be someone that is clear on their value proposition, what they promise to a customer, and who their actual customer is. And if you do that, and if you do it with your own business and with your customers, I'm pretty sure you're gonna execute some great campaigns and some great content. So hopefully it's been helpful. I was 19 minutes, I'm very sorry. And uh, yeah, any questions, I'll take those questions now. Thank you.